Yo, welcome back guys. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of a different video today. Not actually practical, but I wanna share my experiences that's happened, well, over the past couple of months of uh, a non-paying customer. So this hasn't really ever happened to me before. It did back way and when, when I'd first started up and it would take me months to invoice someone for the work I completed. My own fault, I've learned my mistakes. Um, and that is a good thing, it's not a sponsored video, but a good thing with Tradeify is you can track all your jobs. Anyway, so long story short, um, I work for, do work for a stage agent, so we do a lot of EICRs, both Adam and I at the moment, we're doing a hell of a lot. And it was before Christmas, it was end of October, beginning of November. So we get given a job sheet, go pick the keys up, as requested for these EICRs. We turn up at the property, straight away, we both do a visual inspection, as we normally do, as, as most of you guys would as well. And from that, you can just see there's several things not right. So I have got some pictures on my iPad, so I'll, put, I'll look at them as they go on the screen. Um, so you guys can see what I can talk about what you're seeing. First of all, actually I will mention, this here is my latest video that's out to rewire or to fix, the one where we um, didn't re do the Reliant rewire. And as much as love and support I am getting through all the videos, which is fantastic and I appreciate it all, thank you. Still 50% of people on here are not subscribed. So if you are subscribed, please do, because I want to be above, above Jordan again. So pretty much it. Anyway, back to it. So the first picture is uh, on my left or right where I put it, is the fuse board. So it's an outside cab, um, which we fixed loads of times. We've got the new sheets. Nothing great, really, right, really wrong with that uh, nowadays. But for this one, there was. So it's a 16th edition board. So it's one RCD covering the main socket circuits uh, in the property. Standard, not a lot wrong with it, really. Uh, going into it more, so the next picture, you can see which is inside the fuse board. Already there's a few uh, warning uh, symbols there. So I don't know if you can see on the top of the breaker, um, you can see a bit of rust, which I actually haven't come across before without testing the fuse board or looking at the fuse board, really at all. Uh, there's some tape in there. The terminations weren't bad. The buzz bar wasn't bad. You know, it wasn't the neatest thing in the world, but it was easily identifiable, which is what we like to see when do testing. Uh, go across to the next picture. <laughs> so this is when you start getting, mm. So you can see both the tails entering the bottom of the board. Someone has hole sawed 20 mil hole saws in the bottom, push them straight in. You can easily get your finger, especially your little finger, inside the left hand hole and touch the buzz bar easily. So straight away, C2, C1, immediate danger, not really because it's an enclosure, but a C2 if someone goes in there and starts having to poke around. That's in my opinion, you guys let me know different. So from the top of that, we go onto the picture on top of the breakers. So on top of the breakers, there's a sub substantial amount of rust on there. And like I said, I've never seen a, a breaker really ever rust. Uh, so that was a bit like, so there's definitely water ingress uh, into there. I looked around the seal of the enclosure outside. Wasn't the best, the mortar crumbled away. There was a few holes in it. You can see how water was getting in there. Uh, then to the next picture, there was removable plastic blanks, which if they're fit for purpose for the board and they can't be removed very easily, I let them slide. But if it's a lot of the times that we see, like these ones, you can just hit the board, pop, out you go, and you can stick your fingers on the buzz bar. Not good. So that was picked up as well. Uh, the next picture, which you can clearly see, is the bonding cable, 10 mil to the water, I think it was, run across the wall. It wasn't clipped properly. It was falling off. It actually become a trip hazard to a point if it had come off any further under the step. Someone could easily have tripped over that. So that was noted down. And then to the next um, inside, there's a little cupboard inside the uh, front door. I was right in front of you. There, someone had tapped off and spurred off a socket, hadn't clipped in the cable. The cable was just lying across the top of the skirt and we could just flap it around. And it was just a few things that we were picking up a little bit. This is before testing. Like it was just initial verification on visual inspection going around. Um, same thing also in the cupboard on the other side, which was the bonding cable for the gas. That wasn't clipped. It was just left floating around there. So once again, that was noted down. So back to the fuse board. So this is only going off the pictures that I've got here. So the picture we've got is you can physically see that the board below the buzz bar is actually rusting away itself. So water has physically sat in the bottom of that board to a point, rusted it away to the point where you're going, mm, it's not really suitable for its environment. So going from that, before we even testing it, I'm looking through the on-site guys, looking for the regs book, and you pop up red flags of that fuse board isn't suited, suitable for the environment it's in. It shouldn't really be in an outside cab, especially one that's got holes in it, it's not sealed. So straight away I'm like, well, there's a big red flag there. So what we'll do straight away, 
I will fail this. It, it will not fail, it's an unsatisfactory report for this EICR. Straight away, I want to give a quote to move the fuse board inside. Worst case scenario, I can quote to do an enclosure that I've got to um, stop the ingress of water. But that's not always possible. When best, if ever fit a fuse board, try and do it inside. I know I've fitted a few externally around my area where I grow up, grow up where I grew up. There was a lot of them fitted in the outside DNO box. A lot of people say you cannot fit the uh, fuse boards in there. So from now on, rule of thumb, most of the time we're just sticking an adapter box on extending the cables. Yes, we've still got an enclosure within there, but it's a lot smaller. So if they have a smart meter gets fitted or an EV charger. So going from there, let me just nip to my EICR. So this is my, well, uh, observations and recommendations. So we've got a couple of C2s on there. Distribution board not suitable for location, moisture or dust ingress. Um, we've got single insulation hanging outside for light fitting. So you know when sometimes some of the pendants drop down when the little red clip or white clip falls off and the actual pendant flex falls out the fitting. We have quite a lot of that. And this is like I say, just all from visual, going around a couple of sockets that have been smashed. Um, and then going off that, there's just a few more uh, fusibles not fire rated, which is because it's plastic. You can get your finger in it but underneath through the uh, glands. It's not been glanded. You know, if they'd have put a 25 mil stuffing gland on a plastic board to put them tails in, yes, you could have got around that. But equally the board, like I said, is not suitable for its location. So going from all that, we then, and I wish I got some more pictures, but I didn't. But I attached all them to my certificate when I did the certificate. Uh, went around, we tested. They had metal sockets and metal switches dotted around randomly. Uh, metal light fittings, kitchen, bathroom, all that sort of stuff. And as Adam got the first test out, we did our R1s and R2s and it was non-existent. It was winding singles and we had a, what isn't, it was a retrofitted earth afterwards. So it was a, by the looks of it, it was a 2.5 mil earth, uh, singles earth, single insulated, uh, which it would be. Going around to the fittings and drop down to a few of the switches, not all of them, just a few. Uh, it wasn't connected whatsoever, so we got the wand lead out and we started seeing if it was connected through to each light fin, which it wasn't. Uh, it was an empty property, which I might add, there was no occupants in there, so it made things a bit easy for us to see exactly where sockets and switches and light fittings were. Jumped up in the loft, we could see where some of the singles were going, but they ended up getting on the cavity. Still couldn't connect anything, no continuity between anything. Uh, obviously, with them, we couldn't get any ZSs because there was no earth, CPC. Uh, took pictures of that for my software, because you're going to take pictures on your phone, which I then sometimes airdrop to my iPad for the stuff software, or I just take pictures on my phone, so on the software itself directly. Um, so all this was put in the report, you know, I said there's a few different options. I think I gave four quotes in the end. All four quotes included moving the fuse board inside to upgrade it to an RCBO 18th edition, tack back all the uh, bonding conductors, tack back the uh, flapping around 2.5 in the cupboard, same thing for the other bonding conductor, um, replace a couple of the pendants because they had it physically snapped inside and there was a few options so the first quote I think was um, I think I allocated three or four hours for us to physically lift up floorboards find out where all these loose earths were going uh, see if we can connect it back up equally get in the loft we'd already been in the loft we couldn't see anything uh, where they were going so that was sort of a we'll give it four hours quote for that and a fuse board and go from there Second quote was full rewire, lighting rewire, sorry. Um, the customer apparently was going to change the, sorry, to my knowledge that the customer was going to change the carpet so we were easy to access the carpets. But just bear in mind that this was an empty property and they were going to have uh, some tenants moving within a week and a half. So I sent a quote out that same night after speaking to the, um, the estate agents and said, you know, if you want it doing, I'm going to have to accept this straight away and I'll have to move stuff around if not we're going to work some late nights so Adam's fine with that um, third quote was a kinetic light rewire so realistically we could have used the cables that are in there um, to a point obviously cut off the, the drops for the switches put some connect stuff on there that obviously came up to more money because the connect switches are expensive um, and then the last quote was was change everything to a class 2 fitting all sockets all switches or light fittings so that would be everything would be plastic uh, we would then have the plastic bunk to get the light switches to stop the metal back box being earthed out through the pins and be accessible so i tried to and you can imagine i tested it all visual inspections it did the job itself in the icr labeled the board up in satisfactory which i'll put up here which you can see um from there so i just put on the on the thing test on this date 
Uh, next thing special, we just put uh, remedial works required, which means it's failed the test, but it needs these things added to be a safe um, installation. And I must have spent through the four quotes and being there three and a half hours testing while we were there. And to top it all off, may I add, may I didn't say this earlier, I wasn't sure on the dust or water ingress. So I actually rang David Savory, who is the fountain of knowledge that Dave is. And asked his opinion, and he agreed with me that he probably thinks I'm throwing him under the bus now. He agreed with me, it's not too good for this location, it needs to be moved inside, unless there's a way of sealing it up, which maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. But for my own peace of mind, if my name's going to that fuse board, like a lot of you guys, you want it as safe and secure as possible, move it inside, problem solved. Anyway, so three and a half hours doing the ICR with Adam, and then give or take, I'd say an hour and a half at home doing the quote going through it, figuring out what's the best, getting the prices for the Quinetics, uh, all the class two fittings, putting it all together, sending every email, and then that was it. And this is this was end of October, beginning of November. You'll see from the test uh, sticker, I can't quite remember. So then leading on from that, we come to December. So December comes and to my knowledge, because the thing is the, uh, when I send an invoice off to the stage, it doesn't get paid straight away. Sometimes it's 30 days, sometimes it's longer. It shouldn't be, but sometimes it is if they can't get the money quick enough from the, the landlords, which is fine by me. I eventually get paid anyway. So it, it's just, it is what it is. Most of the time with an ECR, there's no materials to the job. It's literally just the labor. So I haven't got the supplies bills to pay. Leaving from that, November, uh, December comes and I get an email from the estate agent saying that the landlord is not happy. He's been around the property, has taken sockets and switches off, taken a picture with his hand with the earth in and saying, your electrician is trying to fleece me out of loads of money. I don't believe what he says. I'm getting my own one in. And that's all I heard. So I obviously replied back, big email, blah, blah, blah. We took pictures, we tested everything you can see from the test results. I wouldn't make something up on an EICR if it wasn't true because I'm genuine and that's what I get paid to do. I'm a competent electrician. I will competently test your house and give you a report of what you've asked for. But equally, the fear of God thinking that you could make something up and then another electrician comes in, test your work, finds out you were lying to then tarnish your name and reputation around this area. It just doesn't happen for me. Like, I, I will not do it. So the fact that this guy's accusing me of trying to take money from him and make things up like to the point where I was seething but I let it drop because it was around Christmas time. I was like, right, I'll sort it out whenever. Never heard anything since. Like, I just forgot about it. And then until I started checking all my uh, unpaid invoices and all that sort of stuff the other day on, on my, my iPad, I messaged the estate agent and said, I've still not been paid for this job. Can you investigate for me? Because I cannot go directly to the customer because I will probably be very rude. Yep, no problem at all, Nick, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he then emails back saying that he never requested any ICR of the property and he always had his own electrician in, so he's not paying the invoice. <sighs> right, okay, back through the emails. So we went back through the emails, they checked out for me. Clear as day, email from himself to the estate agents. Please, an EICR and a gas report needs to do in my property. Can you please sort it? To the estate agents. Sorry about the background noise, because I'm in my unit. They then come to me, ask me, so we have clear written proof. So from there, that gets back to him. You need to pay this invoice within seven days, otherwise further action be required. He then comes back with, I didn't believe your electrician. Uh, he, he was trying to please me. Come with that story again, what's his last email had failed. And uh, so within a week and a half of me completing the certificate, I'm pretty sure that the uh, new tenants moved in. Um, normally there's a grace period of 28 days from a fail report to do the remedials. I was never given that. Uh, apparently I was trying to fleece the customer out of money um, and I still have no more knowledge on it. Uh, I'm owed money from it, but it's one of them I'd rather cut my losses and not have it and just never deal with that person ever again, ever again. Uh, my reputation was on the line if he could have even tried to badmouth me and everything. But the problem is I had so many pictures and my rapport and we were so close to doing a YouTube video on it as well at the time, but I left my GoPro. But equally, it's one of them I need to get permission from the customer and the landlord which I didn't have, so that's why we don't do videos when we're allowed. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really annoying, really annoying. Not that I've lost a lot of money because I haven't. It's more principle and more, he thought I was trying to fleece amount of money. Like, it's not the case at all. I'm here to run a business and a successful business. You know, I've done this a long time now. I'm a young lad, but equally, I pride, take pride in my work, which you can all see the fact I have a YouTube channel and show all my work off. So I'm getting annoyed now. And it just, vexes me the fact that 
we did the EICR cheap anyway. Through the um, estate agents, we do them cheaper than we should do because we get a lot of them. My private ones are a lot more than the ones I do for estate agents, but that's the way it is. I get near enough 100 from them, but if I do them privately, I get one or two maximum. So they're going to be more expensive for the normal people that approach me rather than estate agents. So I haven't lost much money. It's more just principle, like, I don't know, I, I, I just, I'm nearly swore then, like, it's annoyed me so much, the fact that I'd like to meet the person, explain it, and, but he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't want that. He's got someone else in to do bare minimum work and sign it off, instead of speaking to me directly as a competent electrician, asking my opinion and breaking up the different quotes, rather than just saying straight away, no, absolute crap, not true, not getting you in, you're trying to rob my money, so. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you because it's a semi-interesting story. Let me know below if you like, if anything's happened to this to you lot. Um, this is the problem with the ICRs, it's your personal opinion and people can disagree with it. Anyway, now that's over. Let me know below if you've been uh, shafted by an on-payer before. And uh, yeah, it is what it is, unfortunately. I'm not going to take the guy to court for 140 quid, not worth my time and effort. And I'd just be done with it. I'd just make sure I speak to the estate agents and never work for him again. As simple as that. Yeah, let me know below if you've been in the same situation and uh, I'll see you soon.